Treehouse products are crafted to bring you the best that legal, delivered-to-your-door THC has to offer. Treehouse utilizes unique blends of carefully selected minor cannabinoids that get you lit in ways you've only ever dreamed of. From Delta-8 vape pens with innovative blends of Delta-9 and THCP, to the tastiest HHC-infused syrups and hemp flower pre-rolls on the planet, Treehouse has got you covered. Ready to delight in dank gummies and puff powerful vapes? Head over to treehouse.com. That's T-R-E-H-O-U-S-E.com. There's only one E, not two, in treehouse.com. When you go there, get 30% off your order and a free Acapulco Gold HHC pre-roll. You can use the coupon code GENIUS. That's G-E-N-I-U-S. This offer expires August 31st, 2023. Grab your goodies and meet us for some fun in the treehouse. Before we get started, I have a quick favor. I've been self-funding the Finding Genius podcast for five years now. I've done over 3,000 episodes. And as you can see on YouTube, we're up over a million views on the channel, which is fantastic. The next thing I really want to push on is to get up to 10,000 subscribers, because once we do, we'll be able to put a donate button and uh, we'll be able to solicit donations to help keep the podcast running and to also get the Finding Genius Foundation moving along. We have a big project studying anxiety, depression, and PTSD and working on a product to help people overcome these problems because I've seen them explode recently after the last two years of the whole virus situation. So if you would, please subscribe to the podcast. That would help us tremendously give us a thumbs up and check in the description for buy me a coffee it's about five bucks if you could buy me a coffee i'd really appreciate it. it would help keep the channel going and i love coffee thank you forget frequently asked questions common sense common knowledge or google how about advice from a real genius 95 percent of people in any profession are good enough to be qualified and licensed five percent go above and beyond they become very good at what they do but only 0.1 percent a real Jesus. Richard Jacobs has made it his life's mission to find them for you. He hunts down and interviews geniuses in every field. Sleep science, cancer, stem cells, ketogenic diets, and more. Here come the geniuses. This is the Finding Genius Podcast with Richard Jacobs. Hello, this is Richard Jacobs with the Finding Genius Podcast, now part of the Finding Genius Foundation. I have Doug Evans. He's the author of the Sprout. Book. So we're going to talk about uh, his book, his past, his current book, and what's in this book. So, Doug, thank you for coming. Oh, my pleasure, Richard. I love talking about sprouts. I feel like I discovered the secret of life inside of seed that germinate and sprout and then become food, become vitamins and minerals, and become medicine. And it's shocking that more people in the U.S. are not aware of the magical and of the scientifically proven uh, benefits of eating and using sprouts for those aforementioned use cases. Maybe people think it's a very seedy business. Yeah, yeah. Oh, they got to get their head out of the gutter and get into the garden. Well, tell me a bit about your background. How did you first learn about sprouts and get interested in them? Yeah, it's interesting. My background has been in, you know, I'm a New York City street kid, graffiti writer, a paratrooper in the 82nd Airborne, and then workaholic until I was... 33 years old when I watched my entire family. My aunt got type 2 diabetes and they amputated both of her feet and then she died of complications related to diabetes and heart disease. My uncle got heart disease and died. My mother got stomach cancer and died. My father got heart disease and died. And my brother became overweight, obese, developed type 2 diabetes, then had the first of three stroke and a heart attack. And that was the setup for me to either get my affairs in order because I didn't think I was going to live past uh, my mid thirties or make some radical changes to my life. And I opted to make those radical changes, which led me to live a raw plant-based life. Oh, so your diet is raw and all plants? So what does it look like? Yeah, I eat fresh sprouts, fruits, vegetables, seeds, nuts and seaweed and the largest part are sprouts and fruit oh wow okay um do you, do you eat any meat or is it uh it's meat and then raw or what does it look no no it's like literally i'm eating exclusively you know plants and you know i'll eat some fungi but for the most part i'm eating sprouts and fruit and you know what people don't understand is that most meat or all meat is getting 
its nutrients from plants. So all nutrition begins with plants. So if you have knowledge of plant and you're able to get enough plant and enough variety, you get the benefits of all amino acids to form essential proteins, all antioxidants and fiber, soluble fiber, and this whole litany of other benefits, in particular, phytonutrients, bioflavonoids. And so there's this whole world of live plant-based nutrition that virtually gets unnoticed because we live in a society where everything is cooked and processed, refined and packaged with added salt, oil, sugars, and processing. So before, were you eating, what was your diet like? Were you an omnivore or, or how much of a change was this for you? Yeah. I mean, pre-1999, I ate anything. I ate anything. And I associated affluence and abundance with eating out expensive meals, all cuisine, the more exotic it was, you know, the more, you know, I delved into it. And then when I learned about the fact that you could actually get your calories and get your nutrients and vitamins and minerals from plants, that's when I had this, this shift. And I just had no idea really what I was doing in the early stages, but someone told me, yeah, you could live on fruit. So then, and they said, but greens are good for you. So I started eating fruit and greens. And I remember the first time I saw sprout and wheatgrass at the Union Square Farmer's Market in New York City. And it was just fascinating to me. So I bought a bunch of them and I ate them like that same afternoon. And then it was a little ritual. Anytime I was near a farmer's market and I could buy sprouts, I'd buy them and eat them. And for decades, I thought of them as this super nutritious food, but predominantly as a snack or as a garnish. And then when I went into quasi survival mode and I had this existential crisis of where was I going to get my nutrition? And for the first time in my life, I lived in the desert. And then I realized it was a food desert and there was no options for healthy food. My nearest restaurants were McDonald's and 7-Eleven and, and Taco Bell and Burger King. And that's what really led me to Sprout. And I really didn't know much about them. And I started off eating and growing alfalfa sprouts and mung bean sprouts. And then as I started to peel back the onion and go deeper, I learned about broccoli sprouts and clover sprouts and adzuki sprouts and soy sprouts and fenugreek sprouts and chia sprouts and black sprouts and lentil sprouts and pea sprouts. And within a month, I was basically eating just sprouts that I was growing in one cubic foot using six different mason jars in rotation. And that was the most liberating, powerful event in my life where I knew that I was getting all of my nutrition and I was doing it in a safe, controlled setting. And the magic of sprout is that you can grow them without soil, without sunshine, without fertilizer, and you could eat certain varietals in as little as 36 hours and at the longest seven days. You could have this abundance of food, but just think about it. You could grow it in any climate. I mean, you, you'd have to eat a ton. Of, I, I mean, for each meal, how much sprouts do you eat? So it seems like it's like, a, I don't know, I'm sure it's nutrient dense. So you have to get used to feeling a lot less full, but you were getting the nutrients you wanted or what did you do? Well, it's interesting. Like one, you know, cup of sprouted garbanzo beans is like 250 calories, 20 plus grams of protein and a ton of fiber. So, and if you were to make a salad and I posted a lot on my Doug Evans Instagram where I'll make a sprout salad or protein sprout salad and I'll use lentil sprouts, pea sprouts, garbanzo bean sprouts. I'll add some uh, now sprouted tahini which are sesame seed paste. And that little salad in and of itself is well over a thousand calories. So it's delicious. And if you're able to kind of tune in and kind of detoxify from the addiction to salt, oil, and sugar, and you can taste the variety and the texture and the flavors of vegetables 
and in this case, in particular, sprouts. What did you notice when you first started doing this? You know, how long did it take you to adjust, and what was the adjustment like? Well, the adjustment was, you know, I was very driven to be able to continue to live where I was living, and under no circumstances would I compromise my health by eating the processed junk food and processed food. So I had very clear guidelines. And I'd already been eating a plant-based diet raw for decades. So this was the hardest thing initially was just getting used to the fact that the food was going to be a little bit more bland, that there wasn't going to be seasoned. It wasn't going to be, you know, that flavorful initially. But then every day it just got easier and my energy increased and you know, within a week, it was just like, oh, I had my routine down. So I was doing my intermittent fasting and then I had my feeding window between like noon and 6 p.m. And I would just snack on sprouts, eat sprouts. And now my diet is more diversified where sprouts are a major component of the meal uh, of my day. But I also eat a lot of fruit. I eat seaweeds. I eat various um, paste and dip and I'll eat other vegetables if they're available. And so I feel like my life is a little bit more balanced now. But the changes that I felt was this explosion of energy, that I had this explosion of energy that was almost indescribable. Like I felt light on my feet. I felt playful. I felt funny. And in many respects, I felt invincible. Treehouse Live Rosin Liquid Diamond Vape Pens Combine the impressive taste and potency of live rosin extract with the power of liquid THC diamonds to bring you an unrivaled buzz and mouth-watering flavor profile. If you like getting lit, head over to treehouse.com. That's T-R-E-H-O-U-S-E dot com. One E, not two. When you go there, take your vape game up to new heights. Enjoy 30% off your order and get a free Acapulco Gold HHC pre-roll when you use coupon code GENIUS. Again, that's G-E-N-I-U-S. Hurry because the offer expires August 31st, 2023. Treehouse, the best that legal, delivered to your door, THC has to offer. So you didn't feel any, I mean, this changeover, you didn't feel any dramatic effects? Negative ones, I mean, you just felt positive after a while? Or, you know, again, what was the transition like for you? Yeah, it I was tra- good. the transition was really good. At some part... You know, so much of eating is tied to societal behaviors, right? People celebrate around food. You know, they have events around food. There's community around food. Cooking is an interesting part. Probably the hardest part was literally just telling other people that I wasn't going to eat what they were eating. You know, whether I was at someone's home or whether we went out to a restaurant and I just developed this tenacity of conviction that I wasn't going to compromise my intention of eating this way. And, you know, I would go, I, I was literally just this past Saturday, I went to a farm to table event and they literally, you know, had strung up a lamb from Ojai that was eating the, the greens from the heavy rains that they had. And I got a whole lecture on sustainable agriculture and I, you know, I was there you know, for a little bit of time, I didn't stay for the sit down dinner, but I ate nothing there whatsoever. Like I was friendly. I didn't tell people that they were doing the wrong things or anything. I used it as an opportunity to talk about Sprout, talk about my life, what worked for me. And I watched people's eyes open and many people along the way, you know, that eat very differently than me. And I went on a different genius podcast, a Max Lugaver's podcast, and he knew nothing about Sprout to the level and the degree that I had. And he walked away from that podcast, you know, really with his eyes open. And he faced a lot of like trolls and criticism and a lot of people who have this belief that you need to eat meat. And I think that, you know, the conviction that people have, you know, I, I love seeing deep conviction and passion. And my attitude is, you know, eat whatever you want to eat. The long-term science and the history of centenarians and super centenarians shows the consumption of massive amounts 
of plant in these life, in these communities and individuals that have lived really long, healthy lives. So, but I'm also, you know, equally against, or I don't think I'm against, in favorable of eating fresh whole food. So there's a lot of people that are eating highly processed plants, you know, in processed food and packaged food with preservatives, with glyphosate, with artificial colors, sweeteners. And I'm not a fan of those um, either. So I really, you know, my world and my lens is about eating fresh, ripe, raw fruits, vegetables, seeds, nuts, seaweed, and sprouts. And what got me most excited about sprouts is the ubiquitous access to the potential of growing your own sprout in days without soil, sunshine, or fertilizer for pennies a serving and getting all of the nutrients that you need. Yeah, I was going to ask you, sprouts does seem ideal because again, you can grow it yourself. It's fast. There's no pesticides you're putting on, none of that garbage. And the economics of it sound incredibly favorable. So like, how much do you spend on, on eating versus what you used to spend? Do you have an idea? I think a fraction. You know, if I were to go out, you know, a meal, you know, if you ate in a high-end restaurant, it could be 50 to to $100 per person, you know, before beverage. And now, you know, my daily consumption. And fruit can be expensive, too, if you're buying organic fruit. I was at the market and the organic peach was $4.50 a pound or organic cherries were $8 a pound. But if you're eating the sprout, it's literally pennies. I was eating for under $2 a day, $3 a day and feeling really wow. full. That's pretty amazing. So I think that's the potential. And you know, as I researched this and I've been working on my sprout research for five and a half years now and- I funded one paper with the University of California of Santa Cruz. I published another paper with Dr. Jed Fahey from Johns Hopkins University. And um, we're now working on a third paper. And this research paper is focused on the life cycle analysis and the amount of environmental use of resources in order to grow your calories. And it takes something like 800 to 1500 gallons of water to prepare one pound of beef. And contrary to popular belief, it takes more water for grass fed than factory farmed. Um, although grass fed is uh, exponentially better, but 800 to 1500 gallons of water. And to grow a pound of sprout, it takes one gallon of water. Yeah, it's a monstrous difference. Yeah, so just let that sit in. And, you know, have you ever gardened before, Richard? A little bit, yeah. Okay. So, and have you ate the food in your garden? I remember a few years ago, I went to Seattle and I walked around with my friend and there were blackberry bushes everywhere and they ate them and they were delicious. And it made the, uh, the fruit in the store taste like nothing. And they didn't, you know, they didn't look as good. They weren't as big or as full, but they had like such complex flavor. It was amazing. I've eaten a peach off a beech tree, which is also delicious. Um, I mistakenly ate some decorative oranges. What the hell? And I'm like six hours. Uh, usually the experience is pretty good. Well, I think, you know, wild food and fresh food is ideal. But, you know, if you've ever tried to grow lettuce or to grow cauliflower or broccoli or even a little tomato, it's difficult. It's really difficult to grow a crop of food. Yeah, now, I've grown those before and it's not too bad. Actually, I haven't grown sprouts, but I've grown all the things you mentioned. Right. But those things take weeks or months and you know, there's a high probability of crop failure and you're dependent upon, you know, all these other factors based on the duration from planting the seed and setting up the seedling and transplanting it and watering it and protecting it from, you know, pests in the gardens and uh, other things. With sprouts, by following the correct protocol, you're almost guaranteed a crop in under a week without soil or fertilizer or sunshine. Well, you need some kind of light on them, right? Do you have insert lights or what do you put? No, no light. Please. Without them like that, but I mean, don't they need a couple days of, of light in order to no. go from yellow to green? They can go from yellow to green on a kitchen countertop with just daylight, no direct sunlight, mm -hmm. no exterior light at all. Like, because they're so active, the response is very fast and incredible. And also 
not even necessary. To go from yellow to green, you're getting the photosynthesis and you're developing a little bit more of the antioxidant chlorophyll. But in the sheer process of taking a seed and sprouting it, you're doubling or tripling the vitamin C, you're quadrupling the antioxidants, you're increasing the amounts of soluble and insoluble fiber. And all this is happening you know, without the external factors. Like something within the seed is containing this programming that when it's exposed to water and then exposed to carbon and oxygen, it just goes like ballistic. So what about people that are afraid to stop eating other things, but they want to add in sprouts? What does that look like for people? And you feel like that's a, a substantial boost on its own? Yeah, that's actually my recommendation. I'm not, look, sprouts are probably the number one food for weight loss because they're very high fiber and very low calorie. So if someone wants to eat and they want to lose weight, they could feel very full. They could be getting their nutrition, but they're not getting the calories or the fat so they can lose weight. Sprouts are also particularly good for regulating insulin levels in for people with type 2 diabetes. So that's a really a potent factor. Um, sprouts are extremely good for someone you know, who has been exposed to air pollutants. So whether it's benzene or other air pollutants, there's compounds in broccoli sprouts in particular. And there's probably 2,000 published white papers on broccoli sprouts and sulforaphane on their ability to kill cancer cells and detoxify benzene and air pollutants from the lungs. So the notion of what Hippocrates said, let food be thy medicine and medicine be thy food, certainly was thinking about plants, raw plants, and sprouts. So what kind of customers do you get or readers of your book? Where are people at typically when they first encounter you? You know, it's, it's interesting. The book, you know, became a national bestseller. It hit number 71 on all books on Amazon and became the number one vegetarian book, number one vegan book, you know, on Amazon. And, you know, I'm communicating, you know, with tens of thousands of people. And, you know, I just posted something yesterday. Someone put up, you know, scrambled eggs with lock and they had broccoli sprouts on them. And so people are using sprouts to boost their nutrition of what they're eating. Other people are using them um, similar to the way I am in terms of as a vegetable replacement. I know Ben Greenfield is using, because I went on his podcast, he's using sprouted garbanzo beans with like a pickle to make a hummus as a dip. And it can be used with almost anything. And so that was another, you know, key part. So I think there's these different use cases, but like in other countries around the world, like in India, they're sprouting lentils, you know, ubiquitously. And in Japan, you know, they're growing and eating broccoli sprouts in, you can buy broccoli sprouts in 20,000 retail stores in Japan. So in a small country like Japan, you know, they're serving about 400,000 servings of broccoli sprouts every day. So I think in Korea, in China, sprouts are much more commonplace. In America, you know, sprouts are regulated as an add-on or as a garnish to certain Asian cuisine. And they're used by some hippies in health food restaurants on sandwiches and wraps, you know, like alfalfa sprout. But there's so much more to them, which is why, like, I decide to roll up my sleeves and reach out to get this message out uh, to the world. What's the difference between microgreens and sprouts? It's a great question. So microgreens typically take two to three times longer than sprouts to grow. And they're typically grown in a tray um, using a soil or a sprouting medium, whether it's coconut or jute or even like an unbleached paper towel. And they grow vertically and straight and they take two to three weeks to grow whereas sprouts are predominantly grown using the jar method, you know, which has been popular since the 1800s, and they're grown without the sprouting medium. And with the consumption of a sprout versus a microgreen, with a microgreen, you're eating above the fold. So they're literally cutting the shoot and you're eating the shoot and upward, whereas the sprout, you're eating the entire 
plant organism, the root, the shoot, the endosperm, the embryo, the testa, you're eating it all. What are you, what are you growing the sprouts in? Like if, uh, you know, if I came over and you showed me, what would it look like? Uh, like seeds in a jar? Or a little bit of water? Pretty much you use a jar, like the original method. And look, one of the reasons why I wrote the book and my book, the sprout book, you know, contains detailed information on how to grow microgreens as well. So I'm all for microgreens. But the emphasis on simplicity and ubiquity has driven me more towards the recommendation of using a jar. And you can use a jar of any size, from a four-ounce jar to a gallon size jar. And you add the water, you add the seeds, you let them soak for a predetermined amount of time, whether it be five hours or eight hours or overnight. Then you rinse the seeds and you remove you know, the excess water. And then you add fresh water and you rinse them again, and then you strain them. And for decades, if not centuries, people were using all sorts of different apparatuses or substrate to operate as a filter to be able to keep the seeds and sprouts in the vessel and remove the water. So whether it be cheesecloth or stainless steel or these custom mason jar lids that they have, and then you leave the jar inverted so that the extra water strains out over time. So why bother to have microgreens if these are faster? And I mean, do they share the same nutritional profile? Like, what, What's the role of microgreens then? Well, I think that microgreens, because they're grown in soil and the like, are more of an agricultural product. And they are beautiful because they're a little bit more developed. And they're sold predominantly to chef who use them as a garnish for both beautifying as well as boosting the nutrition of a meal. Sprouts, on the other hand, like the ideal time to get the highest degree of the cancer, anti-cancer compound with the chemoprotective properties of broccoli sprouts are three days old. And as the, the broccoli sprouts gets larger and grows, the amount of the isothiocyanate, the glucosinolate called glucoraphanin, which is the precursor to sulforaphane, as the sprout gets bigger, the concentration, the dose of glucoraphanin actually gets smaller and smaller and smaller. So optimum time is really on the third day. So if someone was uh, you know, in real trouble, they had no money and their access to regular food was you know, was cut off or something bad happened, how much would it cost and how long would it take until you could, you know, grow substantial sprouts in order to be able to eat them and and live? And, you know, could you live on sprouts alone? And and again, like, let's say I was in the state, you dropped me off on a, you know, I don't know, a desert island or something, or this was my circumstance. Like, what literally would it take for me to survive on this? I think that you could start having edible food in as little as 30 hours. So the legumes, the lentils, the peas, the, the garbanzo beans, those you could start to eat in 30 hours to 36 hours. Some of the other sprouts would take more days to do it. You could use very simple apparatuses, you know, like I have a whole chapter in my book called Junkyard Dog, where you would take things that were destined to go into the trash or the landfill or the recycling bin, and then I'd clean them and then use them as vessels for sprouting. So for, I mean, if you scavenge, you just got to get the seeds, but the, what's the big, biggest expense is what, the seeds? Big, biggest expense. The biggest expense is the seeds. And look, we now live in an age where there's much more DNA sequencing and there's higher quality farming and there's transparency in the supply chain. In several parts of the world, I'm advising people in Africa and they don't have organic seeds there. And they're driving, you know, or riding, you know, on a horse to go to town 20 miles. And they, they're getting whatever seeds they can, you know, made available there. I'm in the U.S., which I think is a substantial portion of your listener base. You can buy organic seeds that were specifically grown for sprouting purposes that have been tested for pathogens that have been tested for a high germination rate and are sold for basically peanuts. 
Okay. Can, can someone live on Sprouts alone? I don't see why not. Like, I think the only thing, like, within, like, chia seeds and flax seeds, you have omega-3 medium-chain fatty acids in the form of ALA. You don't have a lot of EPA and DHA. But EPA and DHA are non-essential. So therefore, if you are consuming ample amount of plant-based ALA, the body can become efficient in converting that. So you can have super high quality brain food from, from the sprouts. The only thing that I know for certain that I would suggest supplementing would be vitamin B12. Okay. Uh, I'm unaware of how to get that since B12 was typically... Uh, formed as bacteria in the environment and in the stomach. And, you know, but I would recommend B12 supplementation no matter what your diet is. And actually, most meat is in fortified with B12. So they're actually feeding the grain and the feed to the cows with a fortified with B12 supplementation. So what kind of reports do you get from people that dip their toe in and they'll add sprouts to their diet versus people that go whole hog and they, you know, they do your whole protocol and they eat that and fruit and that's about it. I mean, you know, I invite you to join some of the group. If you sign up on my newsletter for at thesproutbook.com. Right now, I think I have uh, 62 people or so. I'm just opening up consuming exclusively you know, this raw plant-based diet and they're just going bananas. Like they're just loving every aspect of it. They're, well, they're, not, they're not going bananas. Are they eating bananas or they're not going bananas? On the fruits, okay. they're, they're eating bananas. But yeah, it's just incredible. And, you know, we're seeing just incredible transformations, you know, of people eating healthy, controlling their destiny, enjoying the sovereignty and sleeping better, thinking more clearly and, you know, weight loss is just a great byproduct. How long after, like, I don't know if you've done this in detail, but are people saying things to you day one or is it, does it take a week or, you know, how long does it take someone to start really experiencing stuff? They're like, oh, wow, I slept pretty well last night. I feel really good today. I think better, or, you know, that kind of stuff. You know, it's all over the place. It really depends on how much someone had been burying themselves previous, right? Some people are coming from really terrible spot. And, you know, they're, the food addiction is real. Like if you think about, um, and a lot of this work is published, this theory that I'm espousing now was published by uh, Alan Goldheimer and Doug Lyle in the book, The Pleasure Trap. But they talk about how people grew up and evolved with scarcity. So the brain is used to not having ubiquitous access to food. So there's scarcity. And so then when you have access to food, in particularly calorically dense food, you eat it. And in this case, where there's so much access to so much food, and then you add on oils and salt, which make it even easier to eat, people tend to become overweight or obese. And if you look at you know statistics in the United States, two-thirds of of Americans are overweight or obese. You know, these are terrible numbers. And, you know, I'm telling you, that's not happening from the people that are eating sprout. Well, what about fermented foods? Do you incorporate any of those? I do. not necessary. I do like fermented food. I think they're particularly good for gut health and for the microbiome. I just actually published a video on my Instagram and on my TikTok of a making a raw sauerkraut without using added salt that I was juicing celery because of its high concentration of the sodium. And that was the vehicle for helping to ferment uh, the cabbage to make the sauerkraut. And then once you're making sauerkraut and doing other ferments, you can incorporate other things into it, other spices, other herbs, other vegetables, other sprouts. And there's a whole world of fermentation. What are you hearing from people that are just adding in sprouts to their diet? They still have their regular diet, but they have sprouts, I don't know, like, let's say three to five times a week, maybe more. What do those people experience? I mean, there's not a immediate effect. It's not like you're taking a hit from a crack pipe, um, <laughs> right? But what people are saying is they feel good. And a lot of it may be psychosomatic, but I think that if someone has 
a predisposition to Alzheimer's and they're eating the broccoli sprout, they feel like they're investing into their brain health. And uh, most people are deficient in fiber. Sprouts are very high in fiber. So, you know, the reports are coming in. They're having higher quality move. You know, they're sleeping better. And I've watched the transition of people, you know, starting small, which is adding a few sprouts into it, and then all of a sudden adding sprouts to every meal and then having meals entirely made of sprouts and watching just incredible life transformations. And you could see like almost every day people are posting their success stories, you know, on their stories and Instagram. And I reshare a lot of them, you know, because I think they're wonderful. Yeah, that must be super exciting. And it sounds like people gain to it. Some of them dip their toe in, but they get addicted and then they do more and more and more. Is that what happens? Yeah. And look, I mean, Richard, you're, you know, you're in the social media world and you're in the online marketing world. I've had over 50 million views of my sprout related content off of my little platform. So the, the content is resonating with people and people are trying it and it's research. It's simple. It's easy. It's affordable. And like what we were talking about the gardening, it's the easiest way that someone can grow their own food. Uh, any stories that come to mind that just stick with you or you were like, holy cow. I mean, the story of uh, Stephen Fiscal was extraordinary. This is a guy who I met under a waterfall before I had written my book. And I told him all about Sprout. And he was, you know, substantially overweight and he was ready for a change. It's in my book, his, his story. And he started to do 30 days exclusively on Sprout and halfway into it. He had so much energy, like off of the couch, he went into doing a off of the couch. He ran 12 um, hour ultra. So crazy yeah. success. And did you feel, did you, you know, were there days, I, I've heard some people that have made you know, significant dietary changes. And some of them have told me they felt so good. They felt guilty or they felt so good. They didn't know what to do with themselves. They were like going crazy, you know, thinking all these things and had so much energy. They're like, ah, you know. Did you experience that? Yeah. Look, I think that when you make changes, you know, if someone's diet is really bad and they make changes, they could go into detox mode. There's no question. Like the craving. Right. Like people that have really bad diets, do they experience problems? Like it's, it's very hard for them to transition because they're, they're detoxing and maybe dumping toxins that they, they're sick from it. I think that, you know, when someone is in that state, I recommend they go to their doctor, they go to their nutritionist or dietitian, and they get some managed care. You know, in several of the institutions that are promoting and using sprouts as medicine, it's very important if someone's on a lot of medications that they're under doctor supervision because the if they're making these changes, they will require less and less of the medication. And if they're still taking the same dose of the medic, be over-medicated. Well, also too, let's say someone starts out at like 250 and they get down to like 220, right? Some of the medications are based on weight. So it can That's become right. too strong for them for another reason too. Exactly. So there's a lot of nuance, you know, to it. But I think that in general, if someone's not on medications and they're just overweight and they decide to eat a lot of sprouts and they start to eat plant-based, they're going to have high quality movements and they're going to see results. You know, they may start to drop, you know, a half a pound to a pound a day. And this isn't like the same dropping of weight, like in a water fast. This is the dropping of the weight that could be sustainable if someone kept it up and did this continuous part. And, you know, so much of diet and what people consume is emotional and how they feel. So if they're feeling good, they look forward to it and they crave it. And, you know, there starts to be major shift to the microbiome, which I know you've gone deep on the microbiome before, but, you know, I, you know, I've been talking and I've collaborated with Dr. Will Bolshevitz, who wrote Fiber Fueled, who is a New York Times bestselling author and gastroenterologist. And, he loves sprouts. Like he just absolutely loves sprouts, recommends sprouts, eats sprouts, grows sprouts, you know, for stages of his family. What if someone says, you know, I'm lazy. 
I just go buy these at the store. I don't want to grow them myself. Is that a, a foolish thing to do? No, look, I think every, you know, you can buy a pack of sprout for about the cost of a cup of coffee in Starbucks. So everyone has their own threshold of where they spend their money, right? I'll buy exotic fruit that other people might look at me like I'm crazy. Like, oh, how can you spend, you know, $10 a pound for this? And I was like, well, I don't drink. I don't go out to eat. Like, why wouldn't I indulge in this exotic fruit that's in season that I'm being drawn to? You know, relative to the everyday sprouting curriculum, like it's very inexpensive, very tasty, very full, crunchy texture. You feel full, you feel satiated. So, you know, that's it. And you start to get the result. I mean, I just turned 57 years old and I have an 11 month old child. And, you know, I went for a run right before, you know, this podcast. So I'm running in over a hundred degrees of temperature. I'm going to do an ice bath when I get off. I'm doing my strength-based body weight training. And, you know, I'm living my best life. I do hot plunge. I do hot therapy using a natural hot springs. And I use cold therapy using a uh, cold plunge. And I've never felt better physically, mentally, sleep. And I'm probably wearing more, more electronics than I'd like. I have my levels on. I've got my whoop on. I've got my aura ring on. So I'm tracking everything because I'm just curious. And things are just incredible. How long have you been doing this, by the way? I've been doing raw vegan for, I'm in my 25th year of that, but I've been doing sprout forward. 50% of my diet sprouts for the last five years. Oh, wow. Well, that's fantastic. You know? it's, that's really good. So I don't want to keep you on any longer. You've given a lot of great info. What's the best way for people to start engaging with you? Should they read the book first? Tube? Like, What's the recommendation? I would say short content, short form content on my Instagram, Doug Evans, or sign up for my newsletter at thesproutbook.com. You know, my book is 12 bucks paperback on Amazon. You can used for seven bucks. You know, great place to start. A lot of research. Because I'm not a doctor or a nutritionist, I interviewed some of the top medical professionals, you know, in the country. Daisy Kennedy from the Dana-Farber Cancer Institute, Dr. Oz, Dr. Mark Hyman, Dr. Dean Ornish, Dr. Joel Kahn, Dr. Josh Axe, who wrote the keto book, Dr. Joel Furman, who wrote Eat to Live, wrote the forward to my book. And, you know, the interesting thing about these people is they're not like me. There's a couple that are plant-based, but some are keto, some are functional medicine. But the thing that they all have in common is they all love Sprout. Like every one of them knew the information that was in the book. Now I brought it to a whole different level of enthusiasm and passion and diversity, but they were already pre-sold on Sprouts. I didn't have to tell them about Sprout. I interviewed them to find out information about the Sprouts of their angle because I was like perplexed that more people weren't sprouting and eating sprout. And to answer your question, if someone's near a store that sells sprout, it's probably the best value that you can get in that store. If you want to take it to another level, you know, buy some seeds, buy a sprouting kit and get going on your own. Have you been able to close the loop where you make your own seeds or is that too much? I have not done that. I have farmers that I know that go through the entire cycle and it's pretty abundant, but that's not in my foray at this point. Okay. Gotcha. Well, Doug, this is great. Very inspirational. Really glad I, I was able to do a podcast with you. And thank you so much for coming. I really appreciate it. Hey, thank you. Thank you for your great work. You're just such a prolific podcaster and you know, you're know you doing great work. So keep it up and thank you so much for having me. And if you have any questions, you know, reach out to me anytime. Excellent. Remember, before you go, You've got to check out treehouse.com. That's T R E, only one E, T R E H O U S E dot com. They offer an array of premium legal THC products, including gummies, vapes, pre rolls, and more. And they're all delivered right to your doorstep with unique blends of carefully selected cannabinoids, all rigorously lab tested to ensure quality and consistency. Treehouse products give you the buzz you simply can't get anywhere else. Head over to treehouse.com. That's T R E. H O U S E dot com. Remember, there's one E, not two. And enjoy 30% off your order and get Acapulco Gold HHC pre rolls when you use the coupon code Genius at checkout. 
Hurry because the offer expires August 31st, 2023. If you like this podcast, please click the link in the description to subscribe and review us on iTunes. You've been listening to the Finding Genius Podcast with Richard Jacobs. If you like what you hear, be sure to review and subscribe to the Finding Genius Podcast on iTunes or wherever you listen to podcasts. And want to be smarter than everybody else? Become a premium member at FindingGeniusPodcast.com. This podcast is for information only. No advice of any kind is being given. Any action you take or don't take as a result of listening is your sole responsibility. Consult professionals when advice is needed.